Lord Jesus, come to us, we pray. Bring us your truth, show us your way, as once a prophet did foretell. Oh, come to us, Good afternoon. St. Anthony of Padua's parish family welcomes all who have gathered for our liturgy for the second Sunday of Advent. Reform your lives and live in God's peace so that justice may flourish. You are kindly requested at this time to turn off all electronic devices, including cell phones. This liturgy is being offered for the happy repose of the soul of Regina Manieri on the first anniversary of her passing. 
We begin our prayer by standing and joining in singing number 807, We Are Called. Number 807. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Good afternoon. Amen. We've begun second week of Advent, so we are on our, our, our spiritual pilgrimage, our spiritual, spiritual journey to prepare the way of the Lord. So my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins, asking the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy, have mercy on us. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The readings can be found at number 994, number 994.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide. But he shall judge the poor with justice and decide aright for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors. Together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the cobra's den, and the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse, set up as a signal, for the nations, the Gentiles shall seek out, for his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. The words the antiphon of the psalm are, Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. May his name be blessed forever. 
as long as the sun his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed. All the nations shall proclaim his happiness. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, brothers and sisters. Whatever was written previously was written for our instruction that by endurance and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another in keeping with Christ Jesus, that with one accord, you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another then as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. For I say that Christ became a minister of the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, to confirm the promises to the patriarchs, but so that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. John the Baptist appeared preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. At that time, Jerusalem, all Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, "'You brood of vipers!' Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now, the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I'm baptizing you with water for repentance. But the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. 
His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, in the second week of Advent, the church introduces to us the character of John the Baptist. John the Baptist is a unique individual in the scriptures because he is the completion of the Old Testament and he's the announcement of the, the New Testament. He's that bridge. And he's, per, he's portrayed in the scriptures in a very um, um, dramatic way. He's wearing camel's hair. He eats locusts and honey. This would be symbolic of his, his closeness to living a simple, austere life. He also, there's allusion to the prophet Elijah. So what's happening is, Saint John the Baptist comes at a time when God's people are longing for the promised Messiah. And so he comes in and announces this, that the scriptures tell us, this is the voice of the one so in the prophet Isaiah. This is where they are talking about the coming of the Messiah. There's going to be one who will prepare the way for the Lord and make straight his paths. And so the scriptures see John the Baptist as fulfilling this role of preparing the people for the coming of the Messiah, for the coming of Jesus. And so the church uses this as we are in this Advent season. I don't know for you, like when I think of John the Baptist, I often think of the character in um, Jesus of Nazareth. If you remember that story, uh, that's the one that I think of. And now with the chosen, there is a John the Baptist character there too. So we can have images of how this person is. But what his role is, is to announce and to prepare the way of the Lord. And he says to us very boldly, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's a loaded sentence, repent. I think I've preached on this before. That word means metanoia in the Greek. And what that means is a change of direction. And so but John the Baptist is calling us when he says repent. Hey, we all need to change the direction of our lives so that we are all focused and following the one, following the Messiah. And we know that as following Jesus Christ. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is a little bit more challenging to conceptualize. The kingdom of heaven is more than just a place, like we're going to Allentown or we're going to Philadelphia, the the kingdom of God. We are going, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is referring to the coming of Jesus into the world. Okay? And so what happens is there's this, this like, well, we're, we're, how would I say this? We are given this king, when, when we were baptized, the kingdom of heaven began in us. Heaven is the completion of the kingdom of heaven. So we live in this this space where the kingdom of heaven is at hand and it needs to continue to grow within us. And so what we hear in the first reading today, Isaiah, who is a prophet, he uses a lot of poetic imagery. And let me just throw out some of that imagery to you. He says this, On that day, a shoot shall sprout From the stump of Jesse, and from his roots, a bud shall blossom. Can you see that poetic imagery? You can see a stump. You know what a stump is? A a tree's been cut down, right? So what does that signify? What does that symbolize? Destruction, death, ruin, ending, the end of something, hopelessness, despair. What caused that to happen? But the scriptures are using that as an imagery. Hey, wait a second. On that stump, there's a little shoot, a little bud growing. A bud shall blossom. And the, the, to the Jewish people at the time of, of Jesus, this would make sure when it says that the sprout of Jesse, they're talking about King David and, and David's kingdom. That's kind of lost in us today. But what we're seeing here is when we see this little, can you picture, can you picture in your imagination a stump in the woods, a, a fallen tree, but out of that stump, there's this little shoot, this little bud, Right? If you can allow that poetic imagery to meditate on it, it's a symbol of hopelessness, new life, another chance. God doesn't forget. God is faithful to his promises. So if you can think of what I'm saying, there's there's a historical value to these words, but what I'm trying to communicate is that that's you and I. We've experienced moments of hopelessness, despair, things that seemingly are hopeless, We've perhaps gotten our lives into a situation where maybe we've made bad decisions and we regret. Maybe we've, we've, we feel God has abandoned us. We feel like, so we can take all of our situations and that's us. Sometimes our life feels like that stump. And what God is promising us, no, 
No, it's not the end. There's a little bud. And a bud also implies growth, continual growth. And so as, as um, the, po- the prophet Isaiah is using this poetic imagery, he goes on to talk about that the one who will usher in this kingdom will have the spirit of uh, wisdom and understanding, spirit of counsel and of strength, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. That sounds like the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? From when we receive confirmation. And so what it's saying is that this one, Jesus, we know it as Jesus, the one who is coming to usher in this kingdom, the spirit of the Lord will be upon him. And he will come to rule with justice. He will come to restore peace. And then they give this poetic imagery going back to, um, a wolf shall be the guest of the lamb. Don't don't wolves eat lambs? Um, A leopard shall lie down with a kid. They don't mean like a person. They mean a kid goat. Do you ever watch uh, National Geographic? Leopards eat goats. All right. A young lion and a calf shall browse together. Right. Do you ever see a young lion attack a cow? It's pretty fierce. A lion shall eat hay like the ox. Right. What, what's this conjuring up in your mind, this poetic imagery? There's, there's a harmony. Things that appear to be opposite are now reconciled. Things that seem to be completely opposites and unreconcilable, things that are antagonistic to each other, no. In God's kingdom, those things will be healed. And so that's what we long for. And we will never have that full restoration until the end time. That's what heaven is. That's the fulfillment of the kingdom. But what what the scriptures are trying to tell us is that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is within you through the gift of the sacrament of baptism and confirmation. And we receive the Eucharist to allow that kingdom to be alive in us. And so we should have the spirit of the Lord upon us. And so going back to the gospel, we see how that, that Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And it talks about a winnowing fan in his hand. Does anyone know what a winnowing fan is? All right, well, then I'll forget it out. We read, my point is we read these in the scriptures, we hear these words, but like, what does it mean? Let me give you the other image. A winnowing fan is like basically on the floor, you pick up the wheat and you kind of fluff it. And what happens is the, the chaff blows away, but you keep the wheat. So you And so what's happening is there's a separation between, the way I know this is because we used to have a pet parakeet. That was my job. You had to blow off the shells, the chaff, right? And the seeds stay in there. That's the imagery that Matthew's using to explain how this kingdom of God comes in to us and is desirous to bringing fruit and bearing fruit in our lives through our words and our actions. And that at the end of time, there will be a judgment. And that winnowing fan will get the chaff, the the surface stuff of our lives. If we don't bear fruit, it will be separated from the the seed that is good. And so that reminds us, too, that we have in time this separation. And he says he will gather his wheat into his barn. Again, an image of heaven. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Ouch. I don't want to be chaff. But what this is doing is it's causing us to reflect using beautiful poetic imagery. And so how do people prepare for the coming of, how did John the Baptist prepare for the coming of God? He called them out to repentance. And it says this, they were coming to him in the Jordan and being baptized him in the Jordan River as they, do you remember what it said? As they, you forgot already? (laughs) Were you listening to the gospel I'm saying that humorously, but it's so easy to hear the words and they go one ear out the other. For me too. So I'm not saying that condemning me. I'm saying that there's a lot of nuggets in here. They come to the the Jordan and they acknowledged their sins. What we see here, we see kind of a type of confession. Of recognizing like, look, I want to prepare my life. I'm going to go through this ritual action and I want to acknowledge my sins. And as an outward sign of that, I'm going to go into the river. And this is what John is doing to prepare for the coming of the Savior. Well, that analogously is for us too. We are called to prepare by acknowledging our own sins. And if anyone says they don't have sin here, the scriptures tell us that, guess what? We're a liar. I didn't call you that. That's the scriptures. 
Okay, so the beautiful thing about the spiritual life is once we recognize that we're sinners, that takes off a lot of pressure. (laughs) Because I think sometimes we feel like, I can't sin, I can't do anything. And like, no, we're not supposed to sin, of course. That's not what we're called to do. But we recognize that we are weak. And Jesus came to save us from our sin. And so when we call upon the Lord, he gives us the strength to turn away from sin. Perhaps when we fall ourselves into sin, what can happen a lot of times is we feel so heavily burdened that there's no hope. I can't tell you how many times I hear this, and it makes me sad. Father, I can't go to confession. You'd be in there for hours and hours and hours. Okay, I'll take you up on it. Because I don't want, Jesus doesn't want you to be burdened. What happens is sin tricks us into thinking that we're unforgivable. Sin numbs our desire to receive forgiveness, and we don't want to stay there. Jesus wants to give us life and give it to us abundantly. And so I was just thinking a little bit, just to give a quick review in my head. Like, we all have spirits in our mind. When I say like this, it talks about the spirit of the Lord is upon Jesus, and the, the one who brings in the kingdom. So we are to have the spirit of the Lord upon us. But sometimes we're affected by some negative spirit. Let me, let me go through seven quickly. The spirit of pride. That idea that says, I can do this. I'm self-sufficient. I don't need any help. I don't have a problem. You're the problem. The spirit of anger. Anger leads to bitterness, resentment, hatred. We all can be susceptible to that because anger is is actually a normal response to an injustice. But if we hold on to that, it can eat us away. The spirit of lust. It's everywhere in our culture. It's taking something beautiful, the human body, and twisting it and making it appeal to our base senses. And it's distorting the image of God. A hidden plague in our culture is is pornography. You know, it's, 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 it's insidious. It's everywhere. And it affects people. It affects men and women, marriages, families, children. So the spirit of lust is around us. The spirit of envy, it's that, that the severe jealousy that you're angry or almost like well, envious. You're jealous of what someone has that you want to take it from them. We're always comparing ourselves to other people. They have this. They have that. They have that. You know what I'm saying? Like we can all be susceptible to that. The spirit of gluttony insatiating ourselves with food and, and drink and, and going to excesses in that. Often what we find, I, I call it n- nervous eating. Have you ever sat down to watch a movie and like a whole bag of uh, like chips is gone? And I don't even realize I'm eating it? That, that's called, you know, that's called, uh, there's a name for that. But there's like a nervousness in that. It's, it's unreflected. We can give it to that spirit of gluttony. The spirit of avarice, or another word for avarice is greed. I need more. I have to work harder so I can get more money so I can buy more things. Oh, wait, there's Cyber Monday, Cyber Tuesday on Amazon. Maybe there's a Cyber Wednesday. And then, oh, if you miss Cyber Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, don't worry, we'll give you a discount because you need this latest gadget, right? It's the spirit of avarice. And then the most dangerous one is the spirit of sloth. Sloth is laziness, but it's spiritual laziness. And so the way sloth often manifests itself is in excessive busyness. What do I mean by that? I got to do this. I got to do this. I got. I, I, I don't have time for church. I, I got to take the kids to soccer practice, and then I have to do this. And then, like, we get so busy that the things of God are displaced. I'm telling you that from personal experience as a priest. I got to do a lot of good things. And did you take time, Keith, to be still before the Lord? So what I'm suggesting is these spirits are in the air too. And we want the spirit of the Lord to permeate us. But these other spirits are there. So there's this battle. There's this struggle. If we're honest, probably all of these things have, we've breathed in that air and they've affected us. And so what we want to do is when John the Baptist is calling us to repentance, it's a good time of year to do a self-assessment. Lord, are you the center of my life? Am I making you the center of my life? Or am I giving into these other spirits? Am I giving into these other areas that are taking over? And that's why the Lord gives us the great sacrament of reconciliation or confession. Because what that, that, that sacrament does is strengthens us. It strengthens us. It obviously forgives our sins, but then it gives us the grace to go forward and, and try again. I just had a confession with a bunch of little kids. It's the do-over sacrament, right? We all need do-overs. We're not as strong as we think we are. If we had a test and tell me what's right and wrong, all of us would ace it because we know it here. But it's not always easy to live it day in and day out. And so John the Baptist's words echoed 2,000 years ago are speaking to us today. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Where do I need a change in my life? Where do I need to change direction? I'm just going to close with a little prayer here. Not a prayer. It's taken from the Diary of Faustina. 
uh, St. Faustina in her diary, and it's Jesus speaking. So I want you to hear the words of Jesus speaking to you, to me. Be not afraid of your Savior, O sinful soul. I make the first move to come to you, for I know that by yourself you are unable to lift yourself to me. Child, do not run away from your father. Be willing to talk openly with your God of mercy who wants to speak words of pardon and lavish his graces on you. How dear your soul is to me. I have inscribed your name upon my heart. You are engraved as a deep wound in my heart. Today I encourage you to pray for the gift, the spirit of repentance, that we can become deeply aware of where those areas in our lives that block us from receiving the grace of God and then make a resolve to make a good confession this Advent. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is his and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. With readiness to welcome Christ, who comes each day by his grace, we now present our needs to the Father. Our response to the petition is, come, Lord Jesus. That the church, like a herald's voice in the desert, may never cease proclaiming what is true and just, we pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus that God, the source of all patience, may enable the nations of the world to live in harmony with one another. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. For dedicated clergy and religious leaders who have remained faithful to their calling by God, may they be strengthened by the Holy Spirit in their mission. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. That our troops who defend our freedom and peace may be strengthened by the God of all encouragement, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Jesus. For the people of our parishes, that God may continue to bless us, keep us, and help us to grow together as one Christian community, we pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. That the spirit of the Lord may rest upon the poor, the sick, lonely, and the dying, we pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. For all who have died, especially Regina Manieri, and our recently deceased, Joan Tanzella, and Anthony Dragota Sr., that they may be raised to new and eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. For all intentions we hold close to our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Father, we hear your call to repentance and rejoice that our salvation is near. Make our hearts and our world ready for the coming of Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As we offer our gifts to the Father, we join in singing number 790, the summons. Number 790.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the souls of the church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, then, since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty and it all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Alfred, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And us not into temptation, but deliver us Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be As we come forward to receive Jesus, we join in singing number 930, Taste and See, number 930. Mm -hmm.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's a reminder that this Thursday is the Holy Day, Immaculate Conception, December 8th. So between the two parishes, I think we have five masses. So consult the bulletin and pick your time. Have a wonderful week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, Archangel defend us in battle. Be our, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you, we pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan. And all the Next Sunday, we will hold Advent Vespers here in the church at 6 p.m. It is an evening of prayer, reflection, and music in preparation for the coming of Jesus. The Advent giving tree is in the vestibule. Please consider taking a tag and purchasing the gift listed. The gifts help local pregnancy support programs. As Father mentioned, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception is a holy day of obligation. Masses will be held Wednesday at 4 p.m. and also Thursday at 8.30 a.m. here at St. Anthony's. There are 2023 parish calendars in the vestibule for those who did not get one last week and like to have one. Christmas party season is coming quickly. Buy a cookie tray from the cookie sale to combat world hunger for only $20. Get your cookie tray next weekend. The cookies taste great and come beautifully wrapped. Your $20 purchase alone will feed 222 hungry people. That's right, each cookie tree tray solid, sold feeds 222 people. These trays make wonderful gifts, so consider purchasing more than just one. There's a flyer in today's bulletin and also a sign-up sheet for orders in the back of the church or you could just call the parish office with your order. The Knights of Columbus Easton Council will be selling a variety of magnets for $5 each or buy four, get one free. The magnets make great stocking stuffers or Christmas gifts. Renewed in faith, we go forth singing number 572, the King of Glory, number 572. Come here. 